the uh, Rock Church folks here because this is a great story. Sean <coughs> Wagner's with us, Larry Blackman, and Jeff, who's known to me as Taz because we go to the same gym. Uh, Sean, uh, and, and thanks for being here. You're, you're right. the leader of what's called the gang ministry at the Rock Church. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, the gang ministry is called Rock and Hood and uh, started a couple years ago. Uh, I myself came out of a gang background. I grew up in, in uh, City Heights, or better known as East Dago, where I grew up. And so I just felt impressed upon my heart a few years ago to, to start an inner city gang ministry to reach out to the gangs here in San Diego. Now the gang you were in, being a white guy, what kind mm -hmm. of gang was it? I was actually in an all black gang. It was an all black gang? Yeah. yeah. What were you doing in it? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um, it was difficult, very difficult to be there, uh, constantly challenged. Uh, always, always, you know. Well, I guess more seriously, why were you in that gang? <coughs> well, growing up in City Heights in the in the 80s, uh, in the 90s, it was difficult because it seemed like everybody around us were all in gangs, and it was almost out of necessity that I security, that, yeah, security just clicked up with a gang uh, for protection mainly. My brother and I both. Yeah. Both. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing in the gang? I mean, what sort of things did you do that people that you look back on and go, oh my God, I wish I hadn't done all that stuff? Well, I mean. We all know what gang members do. Um, I'm not sure everybody does. That's no. why I asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a challenging question. Um, you know, drugs and I mean, you drug were trafficking. And you yeah, were I was arrested, arrested multiple times, yeah. What were some of the charges? Uh, when I was 16 years old, um, I was actually was arrested. I was told I was going to go to jail for the rest of my life for murder. Yeah. Um, but there was an eyewitness that, that, that was there when the murder took, when, when it happened. And it was able to identify me as not the shooter. And so I got off, and um, but still had a felony, two misdemeanors for you know concealed stolen weapon, and uh, but uh, you know what got you out of that? Because once I get this impression that once people get into that uh, culture, it's extremely difficult. It's like the Godfather movie. I mean, you can't you know once you're in, you can't go out. Yeah. Uh, how'd you get out? Well, I actually surrendered my life to the Lord to the Lord August 31st, 1997. And growing up in the gang, growing up in a black gang, one of the things that I've always noticed is that a lot of the guys that I was hanging out with, their mom or their grandmother, they all went to church. Yeah. And so they were they were always talking to me about going to church and Sean used to go to church, you should, you know, all this stuff. And I'm hanging out with my homies and of course we never went. But so after I gave my life to Christ, um, it was kind of a natural transition. I mean, a lot of the homies had a lot of respect for me, so the transition they still had respect for me. It wasn't like some of the other gangs where, you know, if you stop going or stop being around and stuff like that or hanging out on the block uh, where they come after you they actually had a lot more respect for me that i gave my life to christ interesting and i still have a lot of respect because of that larry as well uh, southeast san diego where you grew up yes, what sir. neighborhood was it uh, i grew up in the like uh, 32nd and market yeah which is considered west coast out here in san diego right right the crip area and and uh and what uh, what gang were you in uh, i ran with the, the west coast crips out here in san diego okay uh, my father lived in, in neighborhood territory, which is over there, like uh, 47th and Market. Okay. So I've been, that's where I pretty much. That's how you grew up. That's how I grew up. And you got arrested? <clears throat> been arrested multiple times ever since I was like 12, up until 2009, as a matter of fact. Now, so how did you turn your life around? I mean, what happened that, again, a lot of people in those gang cults, <coughs> they die in those cultures. They're there in prison in those cultures. They don't leave those cultures. Right. So well, what I happened? I think uh, I did a lot of educating myself uh, on things like how to better myself and how to better my situation and how to better my ne my neighborhood and the people that are in my neighborhood. Also, I, I surrendered myself over to the Lord also. Uh, I just wanted to make a change, and, and I kind of figured that there was a reason why God still kept me around, and I want to find out what that reason was. And then, uh, you know, all of a sudden, I'm on the Roger Hescock show. Yes, you are, and you're a star <laughs> now. I'm telling you right now. All right, Taz. Uh, you're tattooed from head to toe, man. That's right. Did you get this uh, in prison, out of prison? Uh, I, I did a little time in prison, uh, county jail too, but uh, some in and some on the streets, yeah. 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 Uh, of all the tattoos, now that you've kind of, as you said, I think you're the third one who would say you've given yourself to the Lord, yes right? Yes, I have, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the tattoos now? <coughs> well, you know. They are what they are. They are what they are. They're, they ain't going anywhere. Yeah. And uh, it's actually part of my testimony now, you know. To say That's that interesting. Where I was and what I'm doing now, it actually uh, helps me when I go talk to school. To Give me an example of that. Like you're talking to kids and they're looking at you going, wow, you know. Well, and do you talk about that, some of what's on your body in terms of how you change? Yeah, I tell them, uh, you know, the, the issues that I have with the yeah. tattoos, the struggles that I go through with it. That you know, it's at your, at your age uh, when you're young, you think a certain way, but when you get older, it, it, the effects of what you do when you're young 
as you get older, you know, it's going to uh, really reflect on your lifestyle that you're going to have. You think you reach them because when you're young, you think you're invincible, you're, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you're going to live forever, nothing can touch you, right? Yeah, uh, and, and that's what I read. When I go to the schools, that's what I, I come up against. They know everything, and I'm <coughs> wrong, and you don't know what I know, and you don't know what it's like out there. So uh, I, I try and educate them and say, look, it's, it's the same game. Gangs are the same business. It's just a different generation, but it's the same stuff. And in your life, I remember we had a conversation where you asked me the question, uh, what does the three-strike law mean in California, which told me that you were, you were kind of personally involved in, c in coming up with an answer to that question. Right. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. It's been a tough life. It's been a tough life. And uh, this, the three-strikes law is definitely uh, something to think about for criminals, uh, myself as well. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, for some people with two strikes, it's a lifetime of parole. Yeah. Probation. You yeah. know, you yeah. One more, one more strike, and you're done. That's right. What gang were you in? Uh, well, my family moved. I'm originally from New York, Roger. Yeah. We, we moved around a lot, so every city that I went to, I we found a gang of yeah. all different ethnicities. So, yeah. multiple gangs. So you've got the experience of kind of a cross country. Uh, yeah, thing. I'm a, uh, yeah, <laughs> a gang uh, you're connoisseur. A, you're a homie in a lot of places. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of homies. Yeah. <laughs> Well, listen, you guys, first of all, are a great inspiration to people and to young people. Do more of it. Do all of it. Uh, make that difference because there's going to be some kid sitting out there who's going to, life is going to be saved, literally saved, and then maybe spiritually saved because of what you were doing. And I wanted to have you on today in a kind of hectic news day mm -hmm. to say thank you and to say that this is, this is really what in this community is inspiring because the gang thing has not gone away. The violence is still there in neighborhoods that we all know about. Yeah. And the police are masking it and they're doing all their public relations thing. But the truth is, people are dying on those streets because they have this mentality still. Mm -hmm. And that's really what uh, I think that your, uh, this, this effort is going to go a long way to, mm -hmm. uh, to stopping and to turning around. So God bless you and thanks mm -hmm. for coming on. Thank thanks, you. Right. I appreciate, thank you, much. appreciate, appreciate you being it. with us. Thank all right. We are not going to take a break, but we are going to go back.